Hello, my name is Johnny Binder, general curator of Cameron Park Zoo. Zoo visitors generally love big cats, and so do we here at Cameron Park Zoo. Cameron Park Zoo is home to four of the species of big cats. So today we're gonna to be learning about lions, tigers, jaguars, and mountain lions. We'll also get to meet the zookeepers and learn what it's like to work with these magnificent cats. Let's step into the wild. Cougars are known by many different names. Depending on the region in which they're found, they could be called mountain lions, mountain cats, pumas, panthers, catamounts, and more. Their scientific name, or binomial name, is Puma Concolor. This large, solitary cat has the greatest range of any large terrestrial mammal in the Western Hemisphere. You can find them from the Yukon in Canada to the Southern Andes of South America. And it's so adaptable that the cougar is found in every major American habitat type. It's the second heaviest cat in the American continents after the jaguar. Adult male cougars can weigh up to 250 pounds. Females are generally much smaller. Our cougars here at Cameron Park Zoo are rescue animals from Paso Robles, California, and their names are Pasio and Robles. They're sisters, and they both weigh 92 pounds. Of all the big cats, the jaguar is perhaps the most elusive, and because of this, it remains the least studied in the wild. What is known about jaguars is that they are solitary animals, generally meeting only to mate. The young stay with their mother for a few years before leaving to find their own territory. At about three years, they're fully mature and able to find their own mate. An adult jaguar can weigh up to 320 pounds or more, making it the largest cat of the Americas. Jaguars hunt mainly at night, and their unique markings provide very effective camouflage. The shoulders, back, and flanks have spots forming large rosettes that encircle one or more dots. Melanistic or black individuals are fairly common, and it's interesting that the spots can still be seen even though they have a dark coloration. Jaguars look very similar to leopards uh, with the differences. Their heads are much broader. They actually get about 20% larger, and the spots on the jaguar are much larger than the spots on the leopards. In addition to that, the jaguars are New World animals ranging from the tip of South America, and they once ranged all the way to the Midwestern United States whereas the leopards are common to Asia and Africa. I'm Amanda Butler, Animal Care Manager of Mammals here at the Cameron Park Zoo. And today we're here to talk about our jaguars. We actually have four jaguars. Our male's name is Nakan, and he came to us in 2005 at the opening of the Brazos River exhibit. He is six years old. Our female's name is Takari, and she will be six in July. Um, she came also in 2005. Nikon and Takari have two offspring, and their names are Adona, which is our male, and Kayapora, our female. Jaguars are not a social cat. Typically in the wild, they would be solitary animals. So that's why here you will only see Nikon on exhibit in the morning, and you'll see Takari with her cubs in the afternoon. Nikon, our male jaguar, suffers from pancreatitis, so it sometimes causes him to regurgitate. The keepers, therefore, keep a very careful watch on his health and his weight. He's weighed weekly to make sure that he has not lost too much weight from his disease. However, by working with veterinarians both here in the U.S. and in South America, our veterinarian and animal care staff have been able to work out a successful treatment regimen for Nikon, and he's been able to sire cubs twice in his life so far. He's still quite a young cat, so he's uh, successfully being treated, but sometimes it's hard to keep his weight as high as we would like to. Hi, my name's Krista. I am inside our off-exhibit Jaguar holding area. Um, I'm gonna try to start a training session with our five-year-old female, Takari. Um, Part of this training that we do with her is a lot of it benefits her for veterinary purposes um, as well as just uh, as part of their operant conditioning which we use to it helps us just manage the cats in general. It makes things easier for them and for us. You will see that she also has cubs with her and part of the training process before, um, before their birth she jaguars are they're very intense and she trains very well and then during her pregnancy 
it was even better because she likes to eat a lot during that time. After the birth, um, training kind of uh, went slow. Um, she was very concerned being a good mom, taking care of her cubs. Now that the cubs have grown some, she started to come back into training and being more interested in it. Curry down, down. Curry pop. Girl. Curry. According to the Chinese Zodiac, 2010 is the year of the tiger. Here at Cameron Park Zoo, every year is the year of the tiger. Starting way back in 1992, the Cameron Park Zoological Society Board voted to help fund a research and recovery station in Bogor on the Indonesian island of Java. Uh, the reason for the, the need for that research center was many, many tigers were being illegally trapped in snares. Uh, by poachers. A lot of these tigers were found alive and recoverable, but they did not have the facility in which to do that. With the help of Cameron Park Zoo and 18 other zoos around the world, we were able to build this station and, and its main focus is when tigers are injured in the wild, they're brought in, they're given all the medical repairs that they need. It may be broke, broken legs and what have you. If they need uh, other medical procedures, root canals, anything else that they needed, it was done. And then these animals were put back wild into the jungle. In 1996, I had the honor and privilege of going down and working in that facility. And we were able to process many tigers back into the jungle. Another one of my assignments there was to educate eight Indonesian zoos on better diets for their captive tiger programs and also chemical immobilization or how to sedate the animals safely, get them into the recovery station and as soon as we could get them back into the wild. Now today Cameron Park's dedication to tiger conservation is, is more active than ever. Uh, we have this wonderful large exhibit which is behind me here. We're also continuing our support and our work with the Global Species Survival Program for Sumatran tigers. Today it's not only illegal poaching uh, that's endangering these animals, but it's also habitat loss to, to the great growing palm oil industry. These oil palm trees, they're going in and clear cutting thousands and thousands of acres each year of old growth rainforest in uh, Sumatra and Indonesian Borneo, which is really limiting the natural habitat for not only Sumatran tigers, but other species. We've actually broadened our scope of Asian conservation last year with the opening of the Cameron Park Zoo's new Asian forest exhibit. So we're now working globally with orangutans and Komodo dragons. We're here in front of the Sumatran tiger exhibit where we exhibit two tigers, Maharani, who just turned four this month on May the 24th, and Kusing, who will be two in November. Maharani and Kusing, both being young cats, are very playful and energetic. Maharani is always very fearless and, and faces life head on, and she is one that when you come to the zoo and see, she's usually over greeting the visitors over by the bamboo. Um, Kusing's a little little more reserved but um, nevertheless always playful. They both enjoy going for swims and uh, they both really enjoy their training sessions. With the fact that they are young cats, um, they are destined to breed. Tigers usually reach sexual maturity at about two years of age and then they will breed into their teens. Um, with Maharani being four, she is already of breeding age but Kusing is not quite yet, there yet. Um, the reason that we acquired both of these cats is because it was a recommendation by the SSP. The SSP is the Species Survival Plan, and the Species Survival Plan looks at all of the captive Sumatran tigers and looks at their genetics. The goal of the SSP is to keep the captive population of Sumatran tigers genetically diverse enough that they would be sustaining for a hundred years. The goal of all SSPs is to breed enough animals and have enough animals in captivity that if their numbers were to decline in the wild that we could possibly reintroduce those animals to repopulate the habitats that they historically inhabited.
right, this is Kusing. He's our male Sumatran tiger. It's about a year and a half old. Sit. So the whistle lets him know that he did the right thing. So it's nearly impossible to reward him the second he does the right thing, so that's what we call a bridge. Kusing lay down. Good. Kusing sit. Sit. We have both verbal and hand gestures. Good boy. Since he's just starting out, Kusing doesn't tend to hold his commands, so that's something that we're working on is keeping him steady. And as you can see, I'm talking and I'm not giving him commands, so he's trying to do things to get me to reward him. So we want him to just do the commands only when I ask. Kusing, lay down. Good. Side. Come on. Lay down. Side. Lay on your side. Good boy. So every command that I ask of him is a different way to see the parts of his body and make sure that he's healthy and he doesn't have any injuries. For example, Kusing, pause up. This allows me to look at his belly and his underside, also to check his paws, make sure there's no abrasions. And as I'm feeding him, I can check his teeth and his mouth and his facial area to make sure that there's nothing wrong. Good. Kusing, lay down. So Kusing's just about a year and a half. When he came with to Cameron Park Zoo, he only had very basic behaviors, uh, mainly just sit and lay down. Good boy. So I've been working with him for a couple of months. Side. So this is still new to him. He's very eager and he's very appetite driven because he is so young, so that's an advantage. Can you see? Lay down, roll, roll over. It also can be a disadvantage because he's very excitable. Roll over. So getting him to really be distinct with his commands is something that I'm working on right now. Good boy. Lions are the largest of the big cats at Cameron Park Zoo. Adult male lions can weigh 550 pounds our large adult male is a beautiful lion and he weighs a healthy 488 pounds. Lions are the only cats that live in groups. These groups are called prides and they're generally made up of three males and a dozen or so females and their offspring. In a pride, all of the females are related and female cubs will typically remain with the pride when they grow up. But young males will eventually leave to establish their own pride by taking over a group headed by another male. We're here at the lion exhibit today to talk about our pride of lions. We have three lions in our pride. Our male, Sam Jack, who was born in 1998. Our female, Shampa, who was also born in 1998. And then our female, Sheba, who was born in 1997. If you visit the zoo often, you've, you've seen Sheba and, and Shampa over the years with some of our cubs. Shampa has had a couple of litters of cubs here and she is an excellent mother. Shampa loves her training and she really is always very eager to interact with the keepers and engage with training and also her enrichment. Sam usually takes more of a laid back approach as you can see him here sleeping behind us. Usually when you come and visit the zoo you'll typically find him taking a nap. Lions can nap up to 18 hours a day. He really is the king of the jungle. Sheba, our eldest female, is the most interactive with Keeper. She really enjoys human contact. We never go in with our cats, but she's always at the cage front, eager to see the Keepers. And a lot of times when you come to visit at the zoo, you'll find her near the window, eager to greet the visitors as well. 
Lions can usually typically eat up to 10 pounds a day of diet. In the wild, they could consume as much as 60 pounds at one sitting, and then that they wouldn't need to hunt for several other days. Here at the Cameron Park Zoo, though, we do feed them a daily diet. Sam eats 10 pounds a day, and the females get about seven. Kyoja is a very special animal at Cameron Park Zoo. She suffered from a spinal injury when she was only a few weeks old and was paralyzed from the shoulders back. Through tireless efforts in physical therapy and other medical treatments, our animal care staff has been able to help her gain her mobility. She still has some difficulty with balance, but overall she's doing very well. Unfortunately, the other lions in our pride here at Cameron Park Zoo rejected Kyocha because of her physical limitations, and she's unable to go into the exhibit yard with them. In the wild, a lion with physical disabilities would probably be killed by the pride because she would be slowing them down and causing them to be put in danger. But she does get to go into the exhibit yard after the zoo closes so she can have time to run and play on the grass. And she does have uh, extra keeper care when she's in her off exhibit holding. Hi, I'm Sean Strickill. I'm a mammal keeper here at the Cameron Park Zoo. Uh, and I am the primary trainer of Kyoja. This is one of our lions. Uh, Kyoja uh, is a, has a, some special needs, so we try to do things for her that's a little extra. We go a little above and beyond what we would with uh, the other lions uh, because of those special needs. So what we're going to try here is a small training session with her um, just to engage her. Uh, she doesn't usually do this around a lot of people, uh, so we will see how she uh, handles this. What I use here is a target pole, and this is just something to direct Kyoja's attention to. Target. Now because of her special needs, we have to be a little more forgiving in the precision of her behaviors, uh, whereas another cat, uh, we would want to have a little more compliance. Kyoja, target. She takes a little more work focusing her attention. Kyoja. And you can see in her gait, she has a little bit of a stiff leg that was due to her spinal injury. Um, but through some of our training and enrichment activities, uh, it has gotten better. Kyoja. Uh, as you can see, it, it is tough sometimes with a uh, lion with special needs like Kyoja. Um, today there just seems to be a little too much going on with the camera and uh, other people around watching. Uh, she's a little uh, distracted. Um, and those are just things we have to work through and over time she'll get better at that. Uh, but what we will do is move on to one of the enrichment activities that we uh, use for her. Uh, we designed this. This is a tug rope. It's made out of a fire hose. Uh, the design is for this is basically to stimulate her both mentally and physically. Uh, she has to work on her motor skills and control, um, as well as building up muscle and strength uh, by tugging back and forth with a keeper. Uh, and it has actually helped her. I've seen actual improvements in uh, the, her leg functions and her balance and control. The way this works, we slip an end under to Kyoja. She will grab that end and try to pull it in. And then you just start tugging with her. You can see some of that motor control that she's got to use as she wraps up that hose.
right now, Kyoja weighs about 244 pounds. So that's what we're tugging against. I'd like to thank you for joining us today on this edition of Step Into the Wild. And I really hope you enjoyed meeting all of our big cats. I hope to see you soon at Cameron Park Zoo. The Cameron Park Zoo in Waco is a member by invitation of the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums and is an accredited member of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, a worldwide organization of more than 200 accredited members who are leaders in global wildlife conservation and assistance in helping animals in their native habitat. For more information, visit CameronParkZoo.com.